Hello Game Boys and Game Girls, I'm the Game Boy Guru and welcome to my February pickups video. This will be all my pickups and new arrivals for February 2019. So first of all I <clears throat> got a couple of things that I had pre-ordered from Play Asia in the mail and that would be the special editions of Earth Atlantis and Rim 9000. So I thought I would quickly unbox these for you. Now, of course, I also got stickers to go along with these, as they usually send, and uh, the Play Exclusives card, <clears throat> because they were, the physical versions anyway, are exclusive to Play Asia. And of course, these are both shoot 'em ups. Uh, unfortunately, Earth Atlantis has not been uh, terribly well received, so uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be a particularly good game. But as a shoot 'em up, better to buy when it's uh, new and widely available than when it costs four times as much on eBay because I waited too long. So this is Rim 9000. Uh, already I'm digging the uh, embossed text on the on the front here and sort of the glossy box. Pretty cool. All right, so here is the inside, as with all the releases, you get a cool little art card that is hand numbered, or not hand numbered, but is individually numbered. I am certificate 815 out of 1600, whoops, so that is uh, there, and then kind of a neat futuristic design there on the back. Of course, uh, original soundtrack by Roex, so that's pretty cool. Always have the spine cards there. Uh, and the game itself with uh, interesting cover. I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, this game looks pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> and let's see what is inside. Just quickly open this up and have a peek, shall we? Assuming I can get the plastic off. But yeah, this is one that I've kind of been waiting for because it uh, looks really interesting. It looks like it's kind of intense though, so I don't know. The jury is out, I guess, and we'll have to wait and see. Ah, very nice. So we have, of course, the game and a manual. I always love to see the manuals. And this is not just a two-page thing. This is actually a thick, full-color manual with pictures and uh, stylized text and all sorts of stuff. Very cool. So, Rim 9000. This was a Play Asia exclusive from East Asia Soft and developer Rainbite. So, pretty cool stuff. And uh, we'll have to try and make a little bit of time to uh, play this one and check it out. Here we go. Get that tucked back in the box here, along with the art card. that in on the other side here. There we go. Rim 9000. <clears throat> now let's move over to Earth Atlantis. Oops. 
And of course, you have to be smarter than the packaging. Or at least smarter than the people who designed the packaging. And unfortunately, these little poly bags they provide are a little bit fiddly. Just enough of a hole here, if I can, to kind of tear into this thing. And that's my dogs in the background. Oh, goofy animals. All right. Wow, this one is a bit more stubborn. There we go. All right. So, Earth Atlantis. There's the box, and here's the back of the box. I like the style of the game, but uh, looks like it's not entirely very exciting. At least based on what footage I've seen, but reserve judgment until I've actually played it myself. So we get, of course, a cool little art card with uh, different life forms there that you encounter. I am certificate 519 out of 1700. And this is pretty cool. No soundtrack with this one, but. The Fading World, The Art of Earth Atlantis. So that's always cool when you have the uh, Planet of the Apes effect with the Statue of Liberty in uh, a state of disarray. And and uh, yeah, the art design in this game is pretty cool. Lots of, lots of neat concepts and designs. This is really... A lot of neat art. Really cool, uh, really cool designs. So very, very cool item. I'll have to thumb through that uh, a little bit later when I've got a bit more time. <clears throat> and uh, I can, you know, sit down and actually look through it. Oh yeah, this has the pull string deal. Some of these games do and some of them don't, so it's always a bit of a always a bit of a uh, gamble whether or not they'll have one or not. Alright. Well no manual. Uh, on Earth Atlantis, but it does have nice inlay. So that's pretty cool to where you've got uh, different different inlay art going on there. So that is Earth Atlantis. <clears throat> and so that's kind of a neat uh, neat package. And like I say, I'll have to reserve judgment on the game itself until I actually play it. I don't see anything wrong with there being a, a game that's a little bit slower pace and less frantic because sometimes then you can play something that's a bit more zen, I guess. Um, I went to one of the local stores and uh, here a couple of weeks ago, I guess it's been, and just randomly picked up some PSP games. Uh, starting to work toward uh, filling out the 
PSP collection. Uh, so I picked up Rocky Balboa, The Legend of Heroes, A Trail of Vermilion is the uh, subtitle there. I got Splinter Cell Essentials, which uh, is kind of neat. Uh, apparently it's uh, a series of flashbacks, so bits and pieces from earlier, or, uh, earlier Splinter Cell games. Reminds me of Siphon Filter 3, where it's a lot of flashbacks and, and uh, old missions. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Official. Uh, Frogger, Helmet Chaos. And the greatest hits version of Star Wars Battlefront, Renegade Squadron. And actually, this was the first Star Wars game that I had on PSP, the uh, black box version. And so, cool to finally have a good shape copy of the greatest hits version. Now, when I went to the store and I bought these PSP games, the clerk told me, uh, I kind of told him that I was um, working toward a full US set, and the clerk told me that his brother was really into the PSP, uh, but had parted with a good chunk of his collection and actually had just traded it in at their other location in the same uh, city. So he said, in the next couple of days, you should be seeing some of those games showing up at uh, this store and then a lot of it at the other store. Which brings me to this bag. I ended up going to the other store a couple days later and was able to pick up some more stuff. So first, I'll start with my lone Game Boy pickup of the month, and that is Harvest Moon GB. So I finally got... Harvest Moon on the Game Boy, and uh, that's a nice one to finally have scratched off the list. But I was able to pick up a good number of PSP games, as you can see here, and uh, definitely filled a few holes in the collection, including some RPGs. So we have Grow Lancer, Wayfarer of Time, Crimson Gem Saga. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 2 Ford Racing Off-Road Valhalla Knights or Valhalla Knights however you want to pronounce that got the standard black box version of Final Fantasy Tactics uh, The War of the Lions got Phantom Brave the Hermuda Triangle I'm not sure what Hermuda is versus Bermuda, but uh, sure, why not? Got a uh, Greatest Hits version of Gran Turismo. Also got Dirt 2. Call of Duty Roads to Victory, which is interesting because I didn't even realize there was a Call of Duty game on the PSP. So that's kind of a neat, uh, neat find. We got Ultimate Block Party, Sega Rally Revo, The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, so now I've got three Legend of Heroes games on the PSP, and Shepherd's Crossing, which may or may not be related to the uh, Harvest Moon series. It certainly looks like if it's not, it's uh, very much inspired by that. So that is my rather large PSP haul for the month. And <clears throat> I want to I want to end the video on a special note and say thank you to a. Uh, a subscriber and uh, someone who's been listening to my podcast, Shoot the Corecast. Uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't seen those particular videos, uh, it's my monthly Shoot 'em Up podcast, and um, uh, you know we talk about various shmups and things like that, and and uh, whatever the game is that we played the previous month on our generation. And <clears throat> back in December of last year we played 
uh, two Atari 2600 games. We played Spider Fighter by Activision and Demon Attack by Magic. That's kind of a head-to-head -head challenge thing. And uh, anyway, um, one of one of the listeners of the podcast and one of the guys who has been a big supporter of the podcast sent me something really cool. And so I got this letter in the mail from Activision. Dear Activision Spider Fighter, congratulations, you're better than Pesticide. You scored 40,000 or more points on the regular game level of Spider Fighter. It looks as if the bugs around your house will never get a moment's peace. We know it wasn't easy to hit 40,000 in this game. Those stingers and green widows have zapped even the best video gamers. It took plenty of cool and stamina to protect your fruit harvest against those lousy bugs. So now that you've made it safe again to walk the orchards, please accept your enclosed official emblem of the Activision Spider Fighters. You've earned it. And of course, the patch uh, from 1983, I think it was, when uh, they did this. The Activision Spider Fighters patch or badge. Uh, so huge shout out and thank you to Herb Wars, a uh, fellow YouTuber. Make sure you go check out his channel if you're not already subscribed. Um, and uh, this is just a, such a neat, such a neat thing. Uh, so major thank you to you, sir, and... Um, I will, uh, I think what I want to do is try to get a, a frame of some kind. And I may already have one that I just need to dig out, but I may try and get a frame so I can set this up and uh, put it on the wall behind my couch in my living room so that when I'm streaming, uh, everyone can proudly see my Spider Fighters patch. Um, because I'm not a kid on the playground anymore who would be liable to get beat up for wearing one of these, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. Because um, this is the kind of thing I would have loved as a kid. You know, if, if we had an Atari growing up, my brother and I, and had, had Spider Fighter and played it like this, I would have been one of those kids desperately trying to get 40,000 points so that I could send a Polaroid to Activision to get a patch. Um, so, major thanks to Herb Wars for sending me this. Uh, this is awesome. I love it. And uh, I, I just have to, you know, give you the nod and say thank you so much. So that's all I have to show you this month. Um, and uh, once again, uh, I'm doing these on a monthly basis because uh, I'm, I'm not picking up as much. Uh, you know, if I was going out every other weekend like I used to, I would probably have more frequent pickups of videos, but uh, I'm trying to limit my acquisitions a little bit since I'm still working on all the shelving and stuff in here and um, also, you know, trying to save money for other things. And so, uh, but since I'm still working on the full PSP set, it made sense to go ahead and get all of these since I didn't own any of them yet. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my pickups. So... Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up uh, and also consider subscribing so that you can see more of my videos in your YouTube feed. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at GameboyGuru and I'll have a link in the description uh, below for my blog where you can read all my Game Boy reviews. That is GameboyGuru.blogspot.com. Also make sure you check out Nira and his channel. He provided the Super Mario Land overworld music that I use as the intro to many of my videos. And he's got a bunch of other great chiptune and game music covers as well, so make sure you go check those out. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and game on.